Well, thank you all for uh, joining us here today uh, as we gather on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish peoples and the Quiquitlam First Nation. It's my pleasure to welcome you all here today, and I want to just take a moment to invite you all to join, a, to join me at the Festival du Bois in, uh, in Mackin Park uh, after this announcement. And I want to thank uh, Coquitlam Search and Rescue for having us here. My name is Selena Robinson. I'm the MLA for Coquitlam Millardville, and I'm the Minister for Municipal Affairs and Housing. And I'm happy to join you all here today for an announcement that will support people here in Coquitlam and around the province. And so I'd like to introduce our speakers. We have Mike Farmer, Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General in the MLA for Port Coquitlam. We have Chris Kelly, BC Search and Rescue Association President. And we have Sandra Riches, Adventure Smart BC Executive Director. And it's an absolute privilege to be here in this space as I look out right behind us here to the people who are gathered here. And I know that keeping British Columbians safe is a priority shared by all of us. And to speak, to speak more to this, I'd like to welcome our first speaker, BC's Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General, Mike Farmer, to say a few words. Uh, thank you, uh, Selena, and uh, nice to be here, Chris, with all the search and rescue volunteers, um, and all of you joining us today. There are some people in this world who dedicate themselves to helping others when they need it most. And there are few individuals who exemplify this more than BC's search and rescue volunteers. These are men and women who give their time and expertise freely, risking themselves in some of the most dangerous situations that Mother Nature can offer to make sure someone in trouble stays alive. British Columbia's 2,500 search and rescue volunteers battle the worst weather conditions and navigate the most dangerous terrain to find and rescue the lost and the injured. And one only has to look up the, uh, the mountains here uh, to see just how challenging that can be. They are vital to public safety in the province, which is why today I'm pleased to announce an immediate funding injection of $18.6 million for operation, training, additional equipment and activities, and developing a sustainable long-term funding model over the next three years. This $18.6 million injection represents the single largest provincial ground search and rescue investment in BC's history, a 24% increase from the $5 million per year announced in 2016. These funds will immediately go to BC Search and Rescue to be dispersed over the next three years to the 80 GSAR groups and provincial programs such as Adventure Smart and Critical Incident Stress Management. It fills an immediate need so that search and rescue organizations can continue to do the great work they do. Critically, this historic investment provides dedicated funding so that the province and the BC Search and Rescue Association can continue to work towards a sustainable and secure long-term funding model. Emergency Management BC will also have two additional, staff, two additional staff positions to work in partnership with BC Search and Rescue to leverage all the work done so far to accomplish this goal. I know a long-term funding model for Search and Rescue in this province has been a long time coming. We want to build on the significant work done by BC Search and Rescue Consultants and Emergency Management BC staff to create a solid foundation for the right model. Long-term funding was an issue when we formed government in 2017, and I can assure you that this government is committed to finding and developing a sustainable funding model that works best for everyone. This funding is clear evidence of that. We will continue to work with BC Search and Rescue Association until a model is in place, and I want to take this moment to once again thank BC Search and Rescue volunteers for their dedication. Our province, its citizens, and its, visit, its visitors owe you yet of gratitude. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Farnworth. I know that's a welcome announcement. This record level investment will help British Columbians and visitors alike when they're taking advantage of our wonderful outdoors. 
And it will also support the province and the BC Search and Rescue Association in, their com in the common goal of establishing the long-term sustainable funding model to continue to, and to continue to support their critical work. And the BC Search and Rescue Association works tirelessly, absolutely tirelessly, to support its members, people who bravely risk their lives to save others. So to echo Mr. Minister Farnworth's words, these selfless volunteers are, are on call 24-7, 365 days a year, to help out others in need. And let's remember, they are volunteers. They often sacrifice time with their loved ones to venture into our trails, our mountains, and our backcountry and face precarious situations. So to speak on behalf of the BC Search and Rescue Association and its members, please welcome President Chris Kelly. Thank you, Minister uh, Farnworth, for the announcement of the largest single influx of funding in the history of ground search and rescue in the province. You're much taller than me. This means that uh, 2,500 volunteers can count on core funding for the next three years for essentials such as personal protective equipment, training, and operating costs. The funding allows for the continuing delivery of the Adventure Smart program, teaching kids to adults how to stay safe in the outdoors. This funding will see critical incident stress management services delivered by specially trained peers continue to assist many of the volunteers manage the impact of the services they provide. On behalf of the BC Sarah Board and the 80 volunteer groups, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Governor of BC for the funding, Minister Farnworth, Farnworth for the strong support, Deputy Minister Lori Halls, and all the emergency BC personnel that have worked with us over the years on this initiative. Thanks also to the municipalities and regional districts throughout the province that continue to support our programs. We also thank everyone that has advocated for the additional support for search and rescue over the past months. We feel this announcement is a message from the citizens of BC to the volunteers that says, thank you for what you do. The SAR community replies, no problem, glad to help. I believe the most important news that uh, has been announced today is the commitment by the government to, make, to attain to a sustainable model before the end of this three year grant. There have been many volunteers involved with the approaches to the province for sustainable funding. We would like to take a moment to recognize a few. Don Binden, who was the BC Sarah president during the early days of the Alternative Support Model Project. Neil Brewer, who was steadfast in developing the evidence in a business case model. And Jim McAllister, the lead of the Alternative Support Model Project since its inception. BC Sarah will strive to disperse the majority of first year's funding to search and rescue groups as quickly as possible using the formula proved effective over the last three years. Budgets for provincial initiatives that have been reduced will be adjusted to ensure the support for several volunteers and the education of the public and outdoor safety continues at effective levels. I would like to ask Sandra Riches, the BC Search and Rescue Prevention Director, to speak on the impact of the announced funding will make on the Adventure Smart Program. Thank you. As the Search and Rescue Prevention Director for BC Search and Rescue Association, I'm really excited to be here. It's an exciting time in our world for both search and rescue response and search and rescue prevention. Fifteen years ago, the BC Search and Rescue Association developed a plan to increase awareness for outdoor safety and they wanted to keep everyone safe in the outdoors. So Fifteen years ago, they created a program the whole idea was to help people be a little bit more prepared on SAR prevention. And that was in 2004 they created the Adventure Smart program. Little did we know, even though we had hoped that it would become a national program, which it did in 2009. And also it's sought after on an international basis. Increasing awareness to help reduce the number and severity of search and rescue calls is the primary focus of the Adventure Smart program. We have six developed programs underneath the umbrella, and we deliver those to adults and children throughout the province of BC, schools, 
workplaces, corporations, ski hills, trailheads, busy trailheads, and regional, municipal, provincial, and national parks. Since 2004, the BC Adventure Smart Outreach Crews, plus 322 volunteer presenters, face to face, have reached over 200,000 people. That's face to face. That's not online, that's not social media, that's face to face public interaction. This financial support will make a difference. It will make a difference because it will allow us to continue to work on the foundation that we've created over the last 15 years. It's a solid foundation, it's a successful model. It will allow us to continue to work with the search and rescue volunteers in the 12 different regions of BC Search and Rescue Association. We love working with all of the volunteers when we head out into the community. It will also allow us to continue to create and build partnerships with industry affiliates in incident prevention organizations, outdoor clubs, parks, both provincial and national, tourism, DMOs, and social influencers that are up and coming. In closing, I'd like to personally say I'm really looking forward to continuing this work with the BC Search and Rescue Association, with EMBC, and with all of the 2,500 search and rescue volunteers we have in the province. Collectively, we make a great team. We will work together, and we'll work together hard to help our very active, healthy province, the Adventure Smart, all in the name of public safety and for search and rescue prevention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris and Sandra. We all know that preparedness is key to keeping people safe when out in the elements. So thank you to your organizations uh, and for all the work that you do in, in educating us about going out into the wilderness. And a, and a heartfelt thank you and appreciation and gratitude to all of our search and rescue volunteers. Uh, they are really... make a difference in our communities. So I'd just like to um, uh, invite media now if they have any questions related to this announcement. Uh, and after questions, we'll take a photo with everyone uh, who spoke today. Yeah, I just have a question for Minister Farnworth. Um, Minister, you said it's taken a long time to, uh, to figure out some kind of sustaining, sustainable funding model. Why has it taken so long? Well, um, first off, uh, it is a big operation, a large province. Uh, we've been government since 2017. There's been an awful lot of issues that we are dealing with. Uh, we've said we're committed to doing it, uh, to coming up with a long-term sustainable model, and uh, we are going to achieve that. And what today's announcement is about is ensuring that that work can take place and that search and rescue organizations in the province of British Columbia don't have to worry uh, about uh, funding in the meantime. And that, so the $18.6 million will allow them to do the work that they need uh, the staff that uh, we have in EMBC will be able to work with them so that we can put in place uh, a long-term sustainable funding model. Yeah. Um, this really came down to the wire. We were, they were running out of funding uh, at the end of the month. So what? why did we wait so long to have this announcement? Uh, first, I, I want to clarify two things. The standard funding that, that uh, has been in place that Search and Rescue have relied on throughout the province has always been there. It was not running out. What was ending was a three-year uh, time-limited program. That funding was ending. And so the, 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 the funding that was available through operations, through grants, that was still very much in place. What Search and Rescue want, though, is that long-term stable funding model, which is what we're committed to doing. And that's why we're saying, look, uh, we want to get there, but we also know that you need additional funds and so the decision was made that we would put in place the 18.6 million so that they know that it's there while we're still working on that model. And at the same time, the, uh, the funding that they were getting through grants uh, prior to that is still also in place. Um, I have a question for Chris Kelly. Chris, you mentioned um, that there's a formula that you use to decide how the funding is um, dispersed between the 80 groups. Um, can, you, can you tell us what that, how, how that formula works out? Uh, to uh, distribute the funds and uh, uh, 
uh, there's a fellow in the room, Neil Brewer, who initiated the, uh, a formula to determine that. And it's based on uh, what skills that uh, group would have, like if they have a rope rescue team or a swift water team, that kind of thing. So you take all of the different skills that that individual team has and put a price tag on it to maintain that skill for the year. So what you do is you add up all the skills and the requirements of a, of a team to uh, maintain the minimum uh, team, as you say, and then each team has distributed the, the funds according to the, the formula of what specialty rescue uh, uh, teams you have and what equipment you need to maintain. So um, it's different from every team because every team around the province have, have different skills depending mostly on topography. So it's a we've done it for three years now and, it, and it's turned out very fair and the teams are, are behind this formula. So if I can ask all the speakers to stay behind with our, our wonderful backdrop volunteers, our models behind us uh, for our photo, and uh, that ends uh, today's announcement. Yes. 